In a previous segment, we talked about acid-base reactions. In these reactions, a proton is transferred from an acid to a base. In this segment, we'll focus on a different class of chemical reactions. In this reaction, a proton is not transferred, but electrons are transferred from one species to the next. This class of chemical reactions is called oxidation-reduction reactions, or redox for short. Let us have a look at molecule A. Molecule A has a couple of electrons that can be transferred to another compound. We'll call this molecule B. So before the reaction starts, the electrons are associated with A. But after the reaction, the electrons have transferred to B. Now, in this process, A loses electrons. This step of the reaction we call oxidation. A loses electrons and is thus oxidized. It acts as a reducing agent in the oxidation reduction reaction. Compound B, on the other hand, has gained electrons. We call this step of the reaction the reduction step. B, therefore, is reduced. It acts as the oxidizing agent in the redox reaction. So we see that in redox reactions, one or more electrons are transferred from the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent. In this process, the reducing agent is oxidized, it loses electrons, and the oxidizing agent is reduced, it gains electrons. Now, let's look at these two materials. We see solid sodium, elemental sodium, which is a metal, and chlorine in its elemental form, which is a gas. These two materials can interact to form sodium chloride, which is a solid salt. This is a redox reaction. Now let us have a closer look at what happens during this reaction. The oxidation state of sodium is zero before the reaction starts. That is because sodium is in its elemental form. After the reaction, sodium is in its ionic form. It has oxidation state plus one. In this process, it has become more positive, and in doing so, it has lost an electron. Therefore, sodium is oxidized in this process. Chlorine, on the other hand, also starts with oxidation state zero, because it is in its elemental form before the reaction starts. After the reaction, in its ionic form, the oxidation state is minus one. We see that chlorine has become more negative. It has gained an electron, and therefore, it has been reduced. From this example, we see that in redox reactions, the oxidation state of the reducing and the oxidizing agents changes. Let us look at another oxidation-reduction reaction. This is the combustion of methane. Methane reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. Let us again look at the oxidation states of each of the atoms before and after the reaction. The hydrogen in methane has oxidation state plus one because it is covalently linked to the carbon atom. There are four hydrogens, which means that the oxidation state of carbon must be minus four because the overall compound is neutral. The oxidation state of oxygen is zero because oxygen here is in its elemental form. On the product side, we find carbon dioxide. The oxygen is part of a compound, which means it has oxidation state minus two. There are two oxygens, the compound is neutral, which means the carbon here has oxidation state plus four. The oxidation state of the oxygen in water is also minus two, which means that the oxidation state of both hydrogens must be plus one, because water is also a neutral compound. Now we have enough information to fill out the following table. The oxidation state of carbon before the reaction is minus four. After the reaction, we found the oxidation state to be plus four, which means the carbon atom has become more positive. And that means it has lost electrons and therefore it has been oxidized. The hydrogen atom has oxidation state plus one in the beginning. And after the reaction, the hydrogens have oxidation state plus one still. That means from the perspective of the hydrogens, 
There has been no electron exchange. It is unchanged. This means that the hydrogen atom in this reaction is a spectator atom. The oxygen atom starts with oxidation state zero and after the reaction has oxidation state minus two, which means it has become more negative, it has gained electrons and therefore it has been reduced. Now in this particular reaction, carbon has lost eight electrons. The value of its oxidation state has been changed by eight. Those electrons have flowed into the oxygen atoms. There are four of them. Each of them changes the oxidation state by a value of two. Let us now try to solve the following problem. In this reaction, we have silicon tetrachloride, which interacts with water to form hydrochloric acid and silicon dioxide. The question here is whether or not this is a redox reaction. And if so, what are the reducing agents and the oxidizing agents? To solve this problem, we first want to write the balanced equation. So let's do that. Here it is. Silicon tetrachloride reacting with water to form HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, and silicon dioxide. The next step is to assign the oxidation states of each of the atoms before and after the reaction. So let's start with silicon tetrachloride. Let's look at the chlorine. When chlorine is bound in a covalent compound, it typically has oxidation state minus one. There's four chlorines, the overall compound is neutral, which means the oxidation state of the silicon must be plus four. The oxidation state of the oxygen in water, as we have seen, is minus two, and the oxidation state of the hydrogens in water are plus one. On the product side, we see HCl. It's an ionic compound, which means the oxidation state of the chlorine is minus one, the same as its charge. The oxidation state of the hydrogen is plus one. In silicon dioxide, the oxide is again bound, which means it has oxidation state minus two. There's two oxygens, the overall compound is neutral, the oxidation state of silicon therefore is plus four. So let us have a look at whether or not there's a change in oxidation states. We see that all of the atoms do not change their oxidation state. And that means that this is not a redox reaction. Now, let us try to solve this final problem. Again, we'll be looking at the reaction that involves silicon tetrachloride. In this case, it is interacting with magnesium, solid magnesium, and it produces magnesium chloride and solid silicon. The question again is, is this a redox reaction and can we determine the reducing and oxidizing agents? All right, let's try to write down the balanced equation. There it is. Silicon tetrachloride interacting with solid magnesium to form magnesium chloride and solid silicon. Let's again assign the oxidation states of each of the atoms. We've already seen that the oxidation state of chlorine in silicon tetrachloride is minus one, and the oxidation state of silicon is plus four. Magnesium here is in its elemental form, which means the oxidation state is zero. Now, on the product side, magnesium chloride is an ionic compound, and that means that the oxidation state of the chlorine is similar to its charge, that is minus one. Magnesium has charge two plus, which means the oxidation state is plus two. Solid silicon is in its elemental form, which means the oxidation state is zero. Now let us look whether or not there's a change in oxidation state. The answer is yes. Both silicon and magnesium change their oxidation state. Now let's have a closer look at this. We see that silicon changes its oxidation state from plus four to zero. That means it has become less positive. That means it has gained electrons. Therefore, it is reduced and it acts as the oxidizing agent in the redox reaction. Magnesium changes its oxidation state from zero to plus two. It becomes more positive, which means it loses electrons. Therefore, it is being oxidized while it acts as the reducing agent in the redox reaction. Chlorine finally 
does not change its oxidation state. It is minus one before, it is minus one after the reaction. That means that chlorine is a spectator atom and does not partake in the electron exchange in the redox reaction. 